When it comes to making modifications to your table, it's pretty simplistic in that, if you want to add additional fields or columns, or rows, or you want to delete them for that matter, just go ahead and right click on any cell. So you get the shortcut menu and go to insert. You can see that you can insert a column to the left of the column that you're currently in. So be mindful of that because if you don't want a new field or column at the beginning here, but in between these two columns, then go ahead and right click on the latter column and go to insert so we can insert a column to the left of the current column that I'm in. You also get the option to insert a row above the current row that you're in, but if you go to the last row and right click and go to insert, not only do you get it above but also below. Let's go ahead and do below and type in an essential oil. Typing it in and hitting the tab key and there we go. Now wait a second, you're looking at this going Hey, you just typed in the same record here. You've got Ling Ling as a sedative, the same price and stock and on order. You have duplicates. Not only do I have a duplicate for Ling Ling, but also I believe for frankincense here and there. It's got the same category, price and stock on order. It's pretty simplistic to find the duplicates within this small of a database, but if you have a huge database and you're like, okay, let's see Ling Ling, which is so fun to say Ling Ling. It may be hard to go. Let's see. I remember seeing that on row 2522. Okay, that's really annoying. Excel has a feature where you can remove duplicates from the database if you don't want them by coming up here, clicking on the design tab, going to the tools group, and there it is right there. Go ahead and click on it. And it says to delete duplicate values, select one or more of the columns that contain duplicates. So in other words, you have your criteria here. In other words, if I go ahead and uncheck all this here, or you can say unselect all them and then just check one to make it easier and say it has to meet just this condition here essential oils where it has to have the same name in order to remove the others that well by the same name they're duplicated so it would be frankincense here or frankincense down below one of those is going to be removed because we can't have two or more and it will do it when I click OK now what makes this nice is that if I do have the same duplicate names here but they have different categories or different price or any other field is different, then to make sure I don't delete what's not actually a duplicate entirely across the board but just for maybe in name, then I want to say okay it has to meet all these conditions in order for it to be a duplicate. Because if it varies in any one of these fields, do not delete it. That way I can find out if it was just a typo or somebody actually added another essential oil and it's supposed to be categorized in like another category of calming. So having checked all these, or in this case, since everything's a duplicate in all those other fields anyways, I can just check the first name and say, okay, if it's got a duplicate first name, which it does, click okie dokie, and it got rid of the two duplicate values. Click OK, and it kept one of the Lang Langs and one of the Frankincenses, but got rid of the uh, other ones because, again, they were duplicates. Cool. Now, not only does it work for the table here, but if you have a data range that's not converted into a table, and of course you don't get the design tab to go to the tools group to remove duplicates, then you want to come here to the data tab to the data tools group and you get the uh, same feature there to remove duplicates that are in your database that, well, aren't part of a table here. Let's go ahead and go back to the design tab and let's do some calculations. Yes, up here. In the table style options, if you check total row, it actually adds a row down at the bottom for you to go ahead and click in any one of those cells. You get a drop down arrow, and from the arrow, you get a list of functions that you can say, okay, for this column, let's go ahead and get the average cost for all the essential oils. And then what we have in stock, let's get the sum or total of everything in stock and what we have on order. And then finally, if you want to convert this back into a range and not have it as a table, then click anywhere inside of the table, come back up here on the design tab to the tools group and say you want to convert it back to a range. Click on it, it says are you sure? Yes. It removes the fields but it doesn't remove the formatting that's been applied to it. And also the total row which if you click in it doesn't give you that total but it leaves behind what you had selected like the average, the sum, in which case you can go ahead and select the entire range here and either on the home tab to the editing group, click on the eraser drop down arrow and clear all formats. But if I do that, I get rid of the currency for this range here. So maybe instead of doing it for all, I can go ahead and break it down one by one and say, okay, up here in the font group, click on the theme colors drop down arrow and say no fill. So I don't have any color within the cells there. 
and then the borders you can still see I've got those blue lines click on the borders drop down arrow and say no borders and you can keep picking at it I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo a couple of times here so I can go back to where it was before we converted it back to a data range which was a table so I can continue with the next uh, couple of training videos thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos